It can thank goodness that we broke that six-day losing streak. <laughs> a buying frenzy on the market, and it's actually quite interesting what's happen happening technically. Last week we were talking about the symmetrical triangle and the target of 3,970 points. And if we have a look at exactly what happened, this is a six-month chart of the Australian market. You can see our target was just down here, and we've bounced off that mark today. So altogether, it does look like the target has been reached, and the market now looking for a bounce. And the first resistance level that we'll be watching will be the 4,000, the 4,140, uh, 4, point mark. Today was a fantastic day for the market, all on hopes that we're going to see a bailout package for Italy coming through. So we did see green across the board. All sectors were higher, with the one exception of property, which was one of the best performers on our market last week. But if we have a look at the top 20 blue chips on the market, only three of them managed losses today, and they were Woolworths, Westfield as well as Woodside Petroleum. In fact, Woodside Petroleum down by 2.3% after a few broker downgrades on the back of its production uh, downgrade on Friday. We did see the financials outperforming. NAB, a fantastic day up, a massive 4.2% in one session. We also saw Westpac up by a massive 3.9%. And of course, those stocks that are linked to market performance, like Macquarie, having an absolute stellar day, up by 5.6%. So altogether, a great start for the Australian market in terms of technicals. We're looking for a bounce to 4,144 points. But of course, the market really being driven by headlines out of Europe. And today, the headline that was driving our market was a potential IMF bailout for Italy, giving it up to 600 billion euros at a borrowing cost of 4 to 5 percent over 12 to 18 months. But if we have a look at the intraday graph of the Australian market, a very strange one because you can see a massive dip in the Australian market intraday. You saw the same type of pattern in the Aussie dollar, that massive dip, and in the euro versus the US dollar, and that was on the back of Dow, Dow Jones report, really pouring cold water over that Italian uh, report about the Italy bailout. And we might go into you know, economic data, any sort of positive news. Obviously, we've got the, the Black Friday sales, but it's all just taking a backseat out of what's happening out of Europe. As, as David mentioned, everyone looking at the, the bond auctions and, and, and any sort of news flow coming out of Europe. It's all about Europe, and I must say today was a nice distraction from the bond auctions that we're going to see this week. We see $750 million being auctioned off in Italy tonight before up to €8 billion Euros in Italy tomorrow. So it is a big week in terms of auctions, but of course if we have a look at the pigs, Portugal, Italy, Iceland, Greece and Spain, there's €114 billion Euros worth of scheduled auctions before year end. So <laughs> it is going to be a pretty tough end to the year given the type of yields that we are seeing around that region at the moment. The Italy 10-year yields at 7.13%. And if we have a look at the three-year yields at 7.7%, now for the last couple of weeks, we've seen an inverted yield curve on uh, the Italian bond market. So altogether, pretty concerning. Not only that add into the mix that we do have the Eurofin Eurogroup meeting on the 29th and the 30th, of November and the market's really hoping for a solution by the EU summit on the 9th of December. So the next couple of weeks we're going to be moving on the headlines coming out of Europe but of course the Black Friday sales they were good in the US. We did see initial we're seeing an uplift of 6.6%. And this is important because this four-day weekend really gives us an insight into the Christmas trading uh, period in the U.S. And, of course, 70% of the U.S. economy driven by consumer spending. So we see that this is a quite an important gauge. An increase of 6.6%, much better than last year where we did see Black Friday sales only growing by an 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 anemic 0.3%. And the best we've seen since 2007 where we saw the best ever year-on-year -year growth of 83 but I guess the interesting thing for retailers is that online sales grew by 26% this year. So a massive surge in terms of those online sales. And that's likely to continue today with the Cyber Monday sales with a lot of online retailers offering further uh, discounts today. Is this morning one uh, became, I suppose, uh, rather highlighted for Qantas. And that's just how viable, if you like, a, a premium service, an Asian hub, for, uh, for the airline is, is going to be. They've come out and said, look, dismissed it as speculation. There'd been suggestions they wouldn't go ahead with the Asian hub. In fact, they just looked to sort of co-chair or get some sort of agreement with Malaysian Airlines. Qantas says no, but this market speculation won't go away. A lot of people, as they often do, pointing to, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. 
This is all on the back of an AFR report saying that Qantas could uh, walk away from that premium airline uh, in Asia given the market conditions and t turmoil that we are seeing in Europe and perhaps look at a tie up with Malaysian Airlines instead. Qantas coming out to say that no final decision have, has been made but they are talking to Singapore as well as Malaysian. But of course the thing driving Qantas' shares today is the certainty that's now in the stock. We've seen some of the costs quantified from the strikes. We have first half uh, profit before tax guidance of 102 to 190 million dollars and of course if we have a look at Qantas's share price hovering around that one dollar 55 cent mark it's a far cry from when private equity came knocking mm. on the door around the seven dollar mark so a lot of bad news priced into Qantas's stock and the fact that there is more certainty has given a, a big boost to Qantas's share and also the market conditions today. Julia on the other side of the uh